please this morning as we give study, uh, help us get past the surface, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, the, uh, I think, uh, what is today, that's what, Monday, Thursday. is it Monday? Yeah. Last Friday, I was quoting that verse, John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. Two kingdoms, when the water gets into the boat, in uh, Mark chapter 4, 36, 37, 38, the boat is filling up with water. When the water gets in the boat, the boat sinks. When the world gets in the church, the church sinks, trying to keep the world out of the church. Try to keep the world out of my mind this morning. And I'd like us to make an effort, and God help me to make an effort, to think like Kevin this morning and not like Luke Keith. I appreciate, again, what Clyde shared in our worship. Yeah, Nicodemus needed some uh, re-education. My guess is that I do too. So the motives and the purposes of a true hearted Seventh-day Adventist are as different as the night is from the day regarding worldly thinking. Mm. And this is our study this morning, Missed Opportunities. This is perfect. I'm going to ask a lot of questions this morning as we go along. Professional. Who would like to read the definition of what a professional is? A job that requires special education, training, or skill done by a person who works in that particular profession. Nice definition, right? Was Jesus a professional? Yes. What was his special skill? <laughs> so Thank winning. You. Thank you. That's so funny. <laughs> Could he do it better than anybody else? Yes. Yes. Was he highly, did he have some highly trained and developed skills? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure he did. <laughs> now, uh, what was his profession then? You say soul winner. Mm -hmm. Was he a savior or a carpenter? Oh, oh. thank you. <laughs> Who are you? Jesus did not use his physical powers recklessly, but in such a way as to keep them in health that he might do the best work in every line. He was not willing to be defective, even in the handling of tools. He was perfect as a workman, as he was perfect in character. By his own example, he taught that it is our duty to be industrious, that our work should be performed with exactness and thoroughness, and that such labor is honorable. I don't know which one to call him. I can say he's no halfway carpenter, or I could say, he's no halfway savior. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, whatever their hand, your hand findeth to do, I mean, oh, that that's it. That's what Jesus did. Now, uh, Councils on Health 506, what is your profession? <laughs> what is yours? Is John, John 13, 15? I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. Your <laughs> profession should be what his profession <coughs> is, I guess. What's your profession? My answer, same as his. Now, who are you? It is important that everyone who is to act as a medical missionary be skilled in ministering to the soul as well as to the body. Yeah, I have some skills. What's a profession? Somebody with some highly developed, specialized skills. Mm -hmm. And there is Christ's profession, put in a very different way. Who'd like to read Councils on Health? Christ, the great medical missionary, is our example. So I'm calling him the pattern man mm -hmm. because he called himself, in medical ministry, he called himself the pattern man. Mm -hmm. Someone read? Christ stands before us as the pattern man, the great medical missionary, an example for all who should come after. Now, in the Bible, Abraham is called the father of the... Faithful. Is it good to be a son or daughter of Abraham? Mm -hmm. Because to go to heaven, you've got to be Romans 2.29, a spiritual Jew, right? Circumcision of the flesh profits nothing. It's got to be the circumcision of the heart. Mm -hmm. Abraham was the father of the faithful. Like Father, John 8, 39, if you were the sons of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. Like Father, like Son, darling. The, the problem with that is it does all kind of funny things to the audio, that, that humming. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'll turn it on as soon as I finish, okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Don't mean to be cold-hearted this morning. <laughs> but Abraham. Now, so you need to be like Abraham. Was Abraham a pilgrim? Yes. 
Yeah. Genesis 12, 2. I'm sorry, Genesis 12, verse 1. God, he was called out of where? Hell the Galdees. <laughs> Come out of that house. Because of where? And this is where he went. Now, was he looking for a city? Yes, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 10. He was looking for a city that hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. God. Hebrews 11, 13. He counted himself a pilgrim and a stranger. He was a pioneer, a stranger, and a pilgrim. The question is, are we? Are we doing a pioneering work when we do medical missionary work? Mm -hmm. Who'd like to read the answer? Medical missionary work is the pioneer work. It is to be connected with the gospel ministry. It is the gospel in practice, the gospel practically carried out. Now, Sister Amani, you may have seen these pictures. I think I showed them a few months ago, but the others haven't. That's a picture of a bed in a lifestyle center. I was, uh, this is uh, Russia, mm -hmm. the southern part. I was invited to go and look at a lifestyle center under construction. And I've seen plenty. And what I expected to see, I saw it. You see blocks, you see wood, you see building, you see construction. <coughs> this is the lady that was on the left, far left, that was overseeing the project. She was the health and temperance leader for the conference there in the southern part of Russia where I was. Real nice lady. And there's her husband down there working on the plumbing. And uh, there's one more. They're digging out the basement. And then she said, I'd like to show you something. And she showed me something I've never seen in my life. She said, come with me. And she said, I'd like to show you our lifestyle center. Oh, I thought you're building the lifestyle center. She said, well, we are building one, but come see this one. And she took us around. By the way, this is a cold place. This is a cold country. She had these line of plywood shacks, and she opened the door, and this is what I saw inside. It's a plywood shack with two single beds. She said, this is our lifestyle center. We can't wait until the building is finished. we got to start now. The people were lined up to come to this program that tells you the success is not based on what? The physical structure. Thank you. Well said. Because unless the Lord builds the house, Psalms 127, verse 1, they that labor, labor in vain. It's not the house, it's the people in the house. Mr. Bateshu was not blessed by the building, he was blessed by the people. Is it nice to have a representable building? We're trying to paint it through the front porch, but it'll never be the building. You know, an ornate church will never convert, convict a soul. It's, I'm getting to something. I'm studying something. We're getting to something. And so I asked her. This is another picture. There's your teacher next week, Pastor Atwood. I was with him. So I saw the, uh, the lifestyle center. I said, well, that's interesting. I said, people have to go to the bathroom. You know, where's your toilet? Where's your, you know, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Oh, come with me. And then she showed me a picture. Guess what? What okay. kind of pit? Huh? Pit. A little better than the pit, not, not much. They're the outhouse, it had doors. It wasn't quite like the pit. But, uh, and the thing on the left over here, can you tell what that is? That thing. That was a towel. That's a hot water heater. They had the luxuries, right? Hot, outdoors, but they had hot water. And friends in Southern Russia, you need hot water. And there, there it is, hot water heater. And I said, well, you know, this is the bathroom, this is the lifestyle center, but you have to eat your meals. Where's your kitchen? Where's your dining room? <laughs> Come with me. And there it was. Wow. And what do you think? <laughs> this is the best meal I've ever had in my life. Some would say that's not professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say? That's highly professional. Mm -hmm. That is a specialized work they're doing. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do it. Ecclesiastes 5.8, God is higher than the highest. Mm -hmm. That is higher than the highest. That's better than best. What do you mean? That's the best meal I ever had in my life. <coughs> what made it so good? Then I said to the lady, yeah, you're the, you're the uh, what was she called, the health, health and temperance leader, some officer in the conference. You're the leader? Yes. Where do you stay? Where do you live? Come with me. There's her house. What do you think? Wow. That woman's living in a tent until the building gets built. Great. Is that pioneering work? Yeah. yeah. So if you say, well, we don't have facilities, we don't have financial wherewithal, we don't have enough education, we don't have, we don't, you don't have enough faith, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Lord uses what you have. Mm -hmm. We started here. By the way, I'm not saying I'm here. I, I'm studying where I want to be. 
I'm more like where Nicodemus was. I want to be where Jesus is. When we came, that old beat up farmhouse where Alex and uh, Jonathan live now, that was our lifestyle center. We were there for years. And I thought, who'd want to come to an old farmhouse? But the Lord brought a lot of people to that farmhouse and souls were saved. And then he gave us a, a nicer building. But I learned in the farmhouse, it wasn't the building. It was the people in the farmhouse. Now, this morning our subject, translation, education. In order to go to heaven, missed opportunity, subtitle, translation, education. In order to go to heaven, you have to be educated. Nicodemus was not. But Clive said he was a member of the Sanhedrin. It says that in John 7. Well, he was in the elite, the cream de la cream, the highest and the holiest august body of the nation, but he didn't know spiritual things. Mm -hmm. There's some things you've got to know in order to be the with the 144,000. Mm -hmm. That group will all be, starts with a T, translated. They're the ones that are on the earth when Christ comes, never tasted death. Mm -hmm. In order to be translated, you've got to have translation education. Now, who's the man to teach that class? Thank you. Now you want to read? Read that with Sister Trinks and that was it. Just before Elijah was taken to heaven, he visited the schools of the prophets and instructed the students on the most important points of their education. The lessons he had given them on former visits, he now repeated, impressing upon the minds of the youth the importance of letting simplicity mark every feature of their education. Only in this way could they receive the mold of heaven and go forth to work in the ways of the Lord. Educating in, did you see the word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what Sister Marie, I overheard her saying about <laughs> simplicity as I was sitting here. Translation education is the education in simplicity. Notice, Elijah, when he was going to, did he know he was going to heaven? Did Elisha ask for a double portion of his spirit before he was taken away? Did he know he was going? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, his curriculum that day, he didn't have to come up with new stuff. What it says is he taught what he always taught, mm -hmm. the most important things. For you, as you teach something, I suggest, and for me too, if I'm struck dead today, what I say in this class should be the most important. There is not time to talk about how we should conduct ourselves in a committee meeting if you hadn't been born again, right? The subject is translation education. Mm -hmm. Only in this way could they receive the mold of heaven. Elijah was taught his students what God had taught him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was the human flesh teacher, but Christ was the one really speaking in that classroom. Mm -hmm. Now, I realized whether you realize how weak you are, I realize something of my weakness and insufficiency. I'm a hillbilly and I know it. What I know would not fit into a thimble. Wouldn't even fill it up halfway. But the sufficiency is not in... 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power, yet it's of God, not of man. So you say, well, I'm so weak and uneducated and insufficient. That doesn't mean a thing in the world, mm -hmm. except you need more God, right? Mm -hmm. Nicodemus didn't see his great need. Do we see ours? Now, John 6, 45, they shall be taught of God. God's the teacher in every classroom, right? So 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, preach the word. He's in the pulpit. He's in the classroom. It's all about him and not about us. Does this still hold true today? What that says. Somebody read it and I'll say, does it still hold true today? Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. He went into the temple and taught. Mm -hmm. Today, is he in the temple teaching? He's, he's judging in the temple. Is he teaching? Mm -hmm. oh, I, I agree. Amen. He's judging. Fear God, give glory to him the hour of his judgment. He's judging. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7.25, he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Mm -hmm. He's making intercession. Habakkuk 2.20, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. Is he teaching? Mm -hmm. Let me change the question. Are there some things we need to learn today? Yes. Yes. Is he our teacher? Yes. Yes. Is he in the holy place? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the judgment come? I'm sorry, most holy place. Is the hour of judgment come? Yes. yes. Does judgment require work of education? Yes. 
Because you come in in a micro mini skirt to class, you need some what? Education. Mm -hmm. Who's got to teach you? That's it. We can rearrange the outside. I want Christmas tree. Well, you said, I said Christmas tree Christian. And you said, my brother Brian, that's a Christmas tree. But the, the, I think I'm halfway right and you're halfway right. Because a Christmas tree will never call themselves a Christian. Mm -hmm. But a Christmas tree Christian will. Mm -hmm. I think we're both right. You know. So the lessons on higher education is what he's giving in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Do we need to learn something about higher education? Yes. And now I'm to our subject. This is our subject. Jesus went into the temple to teach. John 7, 15. I'm going to read Luke 4, 32. You read John 7, 15. In fact, I'll read half of Luke 4, 32. They were astonished at his doctrine. Now, read uh, Luke 7, 15. Then I'll read the rest of Luke 4, 32. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? For his word was with power. Mm -hmm. How does this man know? Mm -hmm. Because he never learned. Mm -hmm. And what you don't learn, you can't no. know. How did he know? Mm -hmm. Now, for us this morning, for me, mm -hmm. John, 1, John 1, 11, he came into his own. And even know him. John 1, verse 12, as many as would receive him, he gave power. His word was with, with 432, power. And the only way you'll ever have power in what you say is if you say what God said. Mm -hmm. So you can talk about convoluted theories all you want, lose your simplicity, but you'll never reach a soul. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Jesus turned the table, Matthew 22, verse 29. He turns the table. Mm -hmm. oh. Jesus, or Matthew 22, 29, yeah. Jesus answered and said unto them, He do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Okay. Now the Christmas tree Christian Bible verse, 2 Timothy 3, 5. You've got the form of godliness, but lacking the power. You have no power. His word was with Luke 4, 32, power. They had no power. When I say power, I mean able to reach the hearts of people. You can't reach their heart unless you're speaking from Isaiah 42. Speak to the hearts. That's John the Baptist's work. We're about to get to John the Baptist. I took put the NIV. I think the NIV is better than the King James. By the way, if you're teaching the King James Version is the only Bible to use, read the book Desire of Ages and see how many dozens of times Mrs. White quotes from the Revised Version. We can prove anything we believe from any good word-for-word -word translation. Isn't that true? Anything. Any verse. Any version. Okay, so uh, there's the NIV. The people were surprised when they heard him. How does he know so much when he has not been trained? He hasn't been trained. Have you been trained? Mm -hmm. Had Nicodemus been trained? Mm -hmm. Trained in what? Theology. Well, this morning, we're gonna, I'd like to get God's training, not mine. Mm -hmm. Translation, education. When the, uh, in John 7, when the guards, and it doesn't say Roman guards or palace guards, it, it doesn't exactly tell you who they are, but evidently they were tough guys. They were sent to Jesus. There was a strife in the division. They were sent to Jesus to bring him back. They were going to make the move and change Jesus up. And they came back and said, John 7, 46, never a man spake like this man. Never anybody spoke like this man. Now, give me a translation. What were they really saying? They came to the Pharisees. They left Jesus. And they said, well, never a man. That includes you, right? You, you Pharisees. Well, never a man ever spoke like that man. Well, the Bible told us what their thought was, that he had Beelzebub in it. Sure. He was speaking from the devil. John 8, 48. You're a Samaritan, and you have a, the Pharisees talking to Jesus, and you have the devil. Mm -hmm. Your bells above. Mercy. Mercy. Thank you. Well said. You know what I mean? Let me be the guard. Let me, uh, 
No man ever, now I use Bible language, no man ever, John 7, 46, spoke like, you guys, you Pharisees. What he said, we've never heard from you. Matthew 5, 20, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will in no wise enter the kingdom of God. What he sounds like, you don't sound like. You sound dead. He sounds, there's power there. There's opposite of power. I like the weakness here. Well, it, you got a nice lifestyle center. You want power in the ministry. You need to, you need to, and you need to. No, you don't. First and foremost, you need to have a heart. And then you can have plywood shacks in Russia. And God brought people there standing room only, lined up. Yeah. I mean, I thought, this is incredible. Take pictures of this and go back and show what I did. <laughs> and you know, yeah, the, the people were surprised. And then I got a little thing from the book, Education. Somebody, first paragraph, please. First paragraph. With the people of that age, the value of all things was determined by outward show. As religion had declined in power, it has increased in pomp. The educators of the time sought to command respect by display and ostent. Pause. Now there's an inspired word. The opposite of power is... This, uh, pomp. Yeah, display and pomp. Both right, pomp. I agree, weakness, mm -hmm. but pomp. If you got no power, you better have a whole lot of what? Pomp. Mm -hmm. The papal system, God bless the Catholic people. Mm -hmm. Many will go into heaven ahead of the Adventists, mm -hmm. but the system is corrupt. Mm -hmm. I mean, their system is all corrupt. They got a whole lot of what? Pomp, but they've got no power. I mean, I tell you, that music is, is, is that music is seductive. Those buildings are magnificent. But it's all pomp. It's all display. It's ostentation because they don't have the truth. God bless all the Catholics. It's the system. It's not the people. It's the system. Mm -hmm. To all this, by the way, the Lord, when He approached you, He does not recognize your degree. He recognizes your devotion. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. To all this, the life of Jesus presented a marked contrast. By the way, He was the pinnacle of proficiency. That man was a professional. Jesus is a professional. A professional after heaven's order. Mm -hmm. To all this, the life of Jesus presented a marked contrast. His life demonstrated the worthlessness of all those things that men regarded as great essentials. And that's the problem. What we consider the most important is in that reality the least. Matthew 23, 24, ye blind guides, you strain at a gnat, you swallow a camel. Nicodemus was blind, and so are the Laodiceans. Now, what the rabbis, now someone please read. And then you tell me what a rabbinical thinker is. That which the rabbis regarded as superior education was in reality the greatest hindrance to true education. Explain. So we're a biblical thinker. Mm -hmm. Well, they put a curse on Daniel chapter 9. They did. So they did. They understand that Jesus mm -hmm. is the God manifest in the flesh. The traditions of man. Put a curse on Daniel 9. Mm -hmm. Matthew 9 verse Matthew 15 verse 9 mm -hmm. in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the mm -hmm. commandments of men Matthew 15 verse 2 why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders mm -hmm. and because it, it's all men it's all about men what men think what men say what men do mm -hmm. are you stamped with approval the approval of men and Jesus didn't have it the definition of what true higher education is. Hmm. Council of the Teachers, page 11, paragraph 1. The name of the chapter, of course, Mrs. White didn't put the name on the chapter. No, I guess she did. She was alive when that compilation was made. She oversaw the production of Council of the Teachers, called back then called Parents and Teachers. Who read? Higher education is the simplicity of true godliness. Our passport from the preparatory school of earth to the higher school above. And when I went to Liberia, 
first thing they say is, do you have a visa? That, South Africa, you have to have a visa too, right? You gotta have permission to go into the country. You gotta have a visa in heaven too. What's it say? S-I-M-P-L-I-C-I-T-Y. If you don't have that visa, now a visa for Liberia costs you $131 US. Hmm. A visa for heaven costs you nothing. Right. Nothing, in a sense. Like everything. In a sense, everything, yeah. but free, it's free. It's free visa. In a sense, in a sense, Matthew 13, 46, he sold everything yeah, once he found a pearl of great price. Uh, councils, uh, educa councils on Education, 126. Our subject this morning is not education, it's worldly thinking. So, uh, and missed opportunities. Who would like to read? The people were astonished at his doctrine. And after hearing him, the verdict was, Never man spake like this man. Jesus' manner of teaching was beautiful and attractive, and it was ever characterized by simplicity. All wondered at his knowledge of the law and the prophecies, and the question passed from one to another. How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How does this man know when he's not qualified. Mm -hmm. No one was regarded as qualified to be a religious teacher unless he had studied. Now, would you agree this is rabbinical thinking? Yes. Yes. You gotta have certain qualifications to teach mm -hmm. at a rabbinical school. Mm -hmm. And the greatest hindrance to spiritual life was attending the rabbinical schools. Mm -hmm. What they saw as the most essential was in reality the greatest hindrance. Yeah. All right, so far so good, right? I think we're lined up with Jesus so far. I hope we can stay that way. I want to stay that way. No one is regard was regarded as qualified to be a religious teacher unless he had studied in the rabbinical schools and both Jesus and John the Baptist had been represented as what's an ignoramus? Somebody because don't ask John the Baptist because he doesn't know. Because he's never Googled. That's it. And they had, John and Jesus had never, last few words, never received this training. Was John the Baptist in line to be a priest? Was his father a priest? Was John in line to be a priest? Was he in line to be educated as the priests were educated? Yes. If he had been educated in that way, it would have totally unfit him to say, John 129, Behold, the Lamb of God. Because when he saw him, he wouldn't have recognized him. Who'd like to read? Desire of Ages 101. In the nature order of things, second. in the natural order of things, the son of Zacharias would have been educated for the priesthood. But the training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. God did not send him to the teachers of theology to learn how to interpret the scriptures. He called him to the desert that he might learn of nature and nature's God. Yeah. Pretty, that's pretty simple, <laughs> pretty simple. Now, that's, uh, all that's great. And now we talk about, excuse me one second, we talk about ourselves. Let's say that uh, we could have a time machine. Of course, we can't. That's all foolishness. I know. <laughs> but we go back in time. time Wouldn't it be nice to see? Well, I hope one day we can we can see that. Maybe in heaven we can uh, see Calvary. We can see some of those things that happened. It'd be nice to be able to relive it and to see it. You know, to see the crucifixion, to be able to witness some of these things. But like I though, maybe yeah. it would be too painful. I don't since know. Since children are going to be outside. Mothers and fathers are going to be outside. Yeah. Maybe all we can take Wives, is what we're going to see. Wives, husbands, separated. We'll see the marks here. They'll always be there, right? <laughs> well, let's say John the Baptist. Let's say we opened up a school back there. And John the Baptist, we're looking for a man. This is before he had his head taken off. Looking for a man to teach a class on baptism. <laughs> is baptism important? John said, uh, Romans 6, 1 to 4, baptism is important. You know, uh, John, John, uh, John 3, 5, and 6. Two baptisms, baptism of the water, baptism of the Spirit. Need a man to talk about baptism of the Spirit. And there's a knock at her door. And somebody is applying for the job. Word got out. We're looking for somebody to teach a baptismal class. And they walk in. What's your name? John. 
Oh, yeah. I had a seat. And we began to interview him. Do you know anything about baptism? What would he say? Yes. Yes, what? What do you know? Baptized. Um, go ahead. You baptized of what? Including? Jesus. I baptized. I baptized hundreds. Yeah. All the nation came out to me to hear me share the gospel. Yeah. I baptized countless, including I baptized Lord God Almighty. Yeah. And I say to him, you got a degree? And he says what? No. And I say, hit the road. That's rabbinical thinking. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. That's rabbinical thinking. Mm -hmm. Now let's take after the ascension. We're looking for somebody to teach a class on medical missionary work. Who's at the door? My name's Peter. Come on and have a seat. You know anything about medical missionary work? Well, you know, back there in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, silver and gold have we none, but what I have I give unto you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and what? Wow. And then verse 7, I reached my hand out and I lifted him up. But do you know anything about spiritual medical missionary work? Well, I, I got in Acts chapter 2, I got filled up with a fire and the Holy Ghost was in me and I did some powerful preaching. And I know something about the Holy Ghost and something about medical missionary work. Did you go to Andrews? And Peter said what? No. Out you go. That's rabbinical thinking. Mm -hmm. Now I said we need a class at, here at Butler Creek. Forget the time machine. It's us. We need a class here in Butler Creek about the second coming. And that good, that's a good class, right? The second coming. Mm -hmm. Boy, the second coming. We need something that somebody that knows something about the second coming. Who is it? Jesus. No, it's not Jesus. <laughs> it sounds like that. It's, uh, are you Jesus? Matthew 5, uh, Genesis 5, 24? No, but I walked with him. Mm -hmm. And then he was not because God what, took him. Okay. What's his name? Enoch. Enoch. Come on and have a seat, man. Mm -hmm. Now, in the book of Jude, verse 14, mm -hmm. Enoch prophesied about what? Remember what it said? coming with that's it thank you that's it he prophesied about the second coming what you said is what he said that's Jude 14 he says well I prophesied a little bit about that <laughs> and I walked with Christ and I've been up in heaven for a long time I might could teach you and I know when he's going to come back you know not the day or the hour but I know you know he's in the sanctuary and I watched him I, I witnessed and I said but have you been to Southern have you been to King have you been out to Loma Linda and he says what no. Not to hit the door. That's rabbinical thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, we need a class here at the Butler Creek Health Center on um, education. Translation, educate, education, don't we? We're going to teach that class. We need a teacher. Translation, education. Who is it? Elijah. Elijah? Well, come on in. I thought you were dead. He says what? <laughs> Never died. <laughs> I got a taxi of fire to heaven, but I never died. Yeah. He said, I did come back for a visit, right? Uh, 17, uh, Acts, uh, Matthew 17, verse 8. They saw no man save yeah. Jesus alone, but they saw before that who? Yeah. Elijah. Moses and Elijah. I was down there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Okay. Do you know anything about translation education? And Elijah said... <laughs> and I, I was a teacher in the schools of the prophets Samuel gave them to me and I expanded them and handed them to Elisha and my subject was translation education and how to get a passport have you been to Oakwood and he says no. and we say Hit the road. You can't teach in this school unless you got a degree. A rabbinical thinker. You can see how far we are from God today, and we think we're so close. This is the problem. Ministry of Healing, page 37. Jeremiah 1, verse 9. Behold, the Lord said unto me, I have put my words in your mouth. Who'd like to read? In choosing men and women for his service, God does not ask whether they possess worldly wealth, learning, or eloquence. He asks, 
Do they walk in such humility that I can teach them my way? Can I put my words into their lips? Will they represent me? Jeremiah 1 verse 9 again. God speaking to Jeremiah, mm -hmm. I have put my words mm -hmm. in your mouth. Once he finds the heart, he can put it in the mouth. Exodus 4 verse 12, Go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So I'm just saying, this is how heaven does it. This is how heaven works it. And then uh, reflecting Christ, this is all off the same page. Christ <clears throat> mentioned to Peter only one condition of service. Lovest thou me? This is the essential qualification. And of course, you could say, the Lord could say to me, and he did say it to me, not in English, but in a, in a voice that spoke to my heart. I was drinking and reading the Bible. And I was praying to understand the Bible. This is the beginning. Not, this is not last week. This is 26 years ago. I say, Lord, I don't understand what I'm reading. <laughs> And the Lord said, Luke, choose ye Joshua 24, 15. This day is the beer or the Bible. It's the rich young ruler. But I wasn't rich, I wasn't young, and I wasn't a ruler. But it was a choice. Choose ye the beer or the Bible. And then the Lord comes with a question. And he can say to Brian, whatever your thing is, or Clive, your thing, or Terry, Maria, or Pauline, you got a thing there, right, that you put over the Lord. Mine was the beer. Today we probably got something. Because if you don't have anything higher than the Lord, then the Lord's ready to come get you like he did Elijah. Mm -hmm. When he gets everything secondary to him, then when he speaks, we listen. Mm -hmm. He wants to educate us. So he said to me, this is what he said with the beer. Do you love the beer more than me? That's the question, right, for service. Do you love the beer more than you love me? <laughs> do you love the cigarette more than you love me? The men love the praise of men? Yes. Oh, never praise a man. Never. You destroy that man. Mm -hmm. Do you love the praise of men more than me? Now, Brother Clive, the other one. Ever he exalted Jesus of Nazareth as the hope of Israel, the savior of mankind. Peter brought his own life under the discipline of the master worker. By every means within his power, he sought to educate the believers for active service. And the Lord said, Peter, you're hired, right? <laughs> we will we'll take you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you love the ball game more than me? Do you love the fashion more than me? These are 10,000 things. Do you love gambling more than me? Do you love the women more than me? Do you love, you know, on and on and on and on and on and on and on. This is from Elder Nagel, A.G. Daniels, all right, the, 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 the names in here, F.C. Gilbert, a converted Jew and an ordained minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A.G. Daniels, the president of the World Church for 20 years, appointed because Mr. White, Mrs. White stood up and she said, that's God's man, you put him in. And he was in when Mrs. White died until 1920, I think. 20 years, head of the World Church, A.G. Daniels. And then Elder D.A. Mozar, he was up in Yale University working on his advanced degree. And uh, Elder Mozar, now retired in Loma Linda, was taking graduate study at Yale University in Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1925 and 26. Mrs. White died in 1915. Uh, elders F.C. Gilbert and A.G. Daniels gave him the following counsel. Brother, the time will never come when a Seventh-day Adventist minister will need a degree to preach the third angel's message. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I study all of that to say, all of that to say this? Yesterday, the danger for Luke Heath, because I got a selfish heart, and if truth be known, you do too, that comes with the carnal package. Mm -hmm. The, it just it comes with it, right? It just comes with yeah. it. Yeah. The passions, the appetites. Come on, men got the eye. They like to look at the women. God has to give us victory over that. Women wear the clothes they like to be looked at. God's got to give you. We got to get a victory over some of these things, and we got to. But the uh, yesterday commercialism is killing the gospel. Is killing the medical missionary work today. 
professionalism. Mm -hmm. There is a school of thinking out there that says you got to have a master's of public health degree to be a medical missionary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a doctrine from hell. Mm -hmm. Your dependence is not upon your degree. Am I against degrees? Not at all. But success does not come from your degree. Mm -hmm. It comes from Christ. Then why get a degree? There's only one reason. The Lord asks you to. And that's the only reason. If he didn't, why did you do it? The professionalism of this world will never give success to our work. Now, when I was uh, in school, I got, I hated my life. And at 17, I said, I hate my home. I hate my life. I hated everything. And I said, as soon as I can get out from this home, I'm going to join the Army and get out of this place. And I did. I finished high school, went straight into the Army. Big mistake. <laughs> Don't do that. Excuse me. Big mistake. I was a hippie. They shaved my head, started cursing at me. Quite a big mistake. Mm -hmm. But too late, right? Because if you don't do what they say, they say, you're going straight to jail. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so I was in the Army. I got out of the Army. One benefit from being in the military is they pay for your school. Mm -hmm. I met Darlene, who was a New Age spiritualist at that time. And uh, she was had finished Emory, graduated with honors. And I thought, she got more education than I do. <laughs> I said, I need some too, and they'll pay me to do it. So I went to the University of Georgia, and I looked at the different majors. I was a pagan, pagan with a capital P. I looked at the majors, and I thought, English major, what do you study? Mostly just read books and write stories about it. <laughs> and I like to read, so I majored in English. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, Gothic, this, that, and the other, the... Uh, Shakespeare and Keats and Butler and Yeats, my Irish name, I was Irish myself, and reading about all these things, and uh, James Joyce, the higher, you know, professional polished writers that won the Nobel Prize and the Pulitzer Prize for Literature. This was educated men writing for educated men like me. And I was getting my education. And of course, I melted down, I got put in jail, marriage almost over, because I was doing all the things that sinners do. And then, uh, we moved out to the country. God delivered us out of the city. He delivered me out of jail. And I didn't know God, but God knew me. I ended up out in the country, but I hadn't finished school. This was Mentone, Alabama. The only school nearby, the only college nearby was a Berry College, which was a Christian school. And so I went and I enrolled at Berry College. I was doing it sort of for the education, but I was making good money just going to school. And I would go drunk. I'd sit there drunk in the class, and they would read, he'd read a story, Emily Dickinson's a train. What does a train represent? Teacher would say it. I'd write down what the teacher said, had a good memory, and I'd get an A. And I was an honor student, a drunk honor student. And then one day I was sitting in a sociology class, and a Jewish teacher, we kind of sort of got to be friends. Uh, I was 25, 26 then, so I was a little older than most of the students. A Jewish teacher, he said the Rand Corporation had assassinated the vice president in some country down in South America. And even as drunk as I was, I said, huh? I said, the what? He said, yeah, the Rand Corporation did some kind of something and this, that, and the other, and they were going to assassinate somebody in politics. I thought, you're kidding me. And after the class, I walked up, and I said, if that's true, if this corporate America is involved in all these things, and all you can do is sit here and talk about it and do nothing, I said, I'll never sit in this class again. And I walked out and never went back to school. I was in my last year, very close to finishing. And then I became a Seventh-day Adventist and went to Wildwood. And all this emphasis on degrees. And I thought, I'll go back and finish school. I was this close. Mm -hmm. Now, I there's an organization, the self-supporting institutions, that give educational benefits. They give you money, but you've got to work for a year mm -hmm. or you have to pay the money back. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for, then for two, three, four years. I figured I'd be there for, so in other words, it'd be free. I could go back to school and they would pay for it free. Come on. God, that's good. And I continue with Wildwood in my work there. Yeah. And then God spoke to my heart. He said, why are you going to go back? To get my degree. And then God said, why? Mm -hmm. 
and the only answer I could think of, well, I need it. And God said, you need. That's what you need. Now, Joseph, first a slave, then a prisoner, and then a prime minister. Can God take anybody and put them anywhere at any time doing anything? Yeah. Ask Mordecai, right? Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's it. If you think your success depends on rabbinical thinker, shame on you. The only thing you need is Christ. If he sees fit to give you some licensure and to send you to Loma Linden to be a physician, I say praise the Lord, don't you? Mm -hmm. If God called me a minister, he said, Lou, I want you to be a minister of the gospel and go to Andrews, I'd be gone. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. If he called me to be a doctor, where would I go? Medical. Where? Which one? Oh. Of course. It's our school. But he hadn't called me to that. He's called me here. <laughs> okay. All right, Lord. He's called me here. When I look at that, see the man that's serving me? Is that man a professional? Of the highest order. Serving beans or uh, what, do they, uh, what do you call that stuff? The cabbage dish over there. Sauerkraut? Uh, yeah, they got a name for it though. It's, yeah, it's called, uh, what's it called? Whatever, a Russian dish. I can't remember what it was. The man serving me, you know, then he go back there and wash the dish in a, in a barrel of water. He gets out of some faucet out of the hillside. And I, I looked at that man, I thought, these people are professional. Because remember, the chief professional is Christ. And if they're doing what he did, if his profession is Christ's profession, there's no higher profession in the world. So, I think God wants to dispel the myth that we need all these, all the recognition of the world and all the facilities of the world and all the rabbinical thinking. You need to be simple. And if the Lord gave us the farmhouse on the hill down there, that's all we need. And he gave us this, that's all we need. And if we need more, he'll give more. That's, uh, that's it. I see it. By the way, uh, let me add something. I got two minutes. I live in reality. And Elizabeth won't mind me saying this, but her parents have been pressing her for five years to stop wasting her life in this place and go and get a degree. Mm -hmm. A lady came out of our school and uh, she worked in our hydrotherapy department. Very, she sang at our wedding. Darlene and I had a Christian wedding. She sang at our wedding. She worked in the hydro department. Her friends went to Southern to be nurses. And they would come back and come back. Year one, you're wasting year two, two more year, year three. And then they had a BS degree in nursing. And they're making $800 a night. And you're still here doing hot foot baths. You are what? Wasting your life. And unless you have a firm foundation, you'll falter, fail, and imbibe that rabbinical thinking. God had, to, God had to choose a man like John that could stand up to it. John could, by God's grace, right? John could stand up to it. But the others wavered and they shook and just about fell, right? Peter, John, James, they just about were uh, shaken out. Almost. They weren't. But almost. When Christ was nailed on the tree, how, when the shepherd was nailed up, what happened to the sheep? How many fled? Oh. Rabbinical thinking. So let me ask you, you're running the school? When a man comes in, have you been to Andrews? You've been to Keene? You've been to Oakwood? You've been to Loma Linda? Uh, no. Have you been to the school of Christ? No? Then leave. <laughs> have you been to the school of Christ? Yes. Have you graduated? Yes. Then leave. <laughs> the only man that comes in is one in the school of Christ and what? Stays in. When do you graduate? You never graduate. Thank you. The education just begins here and is continued there. I'll pray. Father in heaven, help us this morning not to think like the rabbis of old.
but to think like Christ. I claim to promise for myself and for my friends, uh, Philippians 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you. Give us a simple mind. Please, give us a simple mind. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.